Good morning, my dear students. Today we will discuss about the topic direct and indirect zinc transfer methods. Many plant species have been successfully transformed using various transformation methods. Some rely on the use of agrobacterium species with a gram negative soil borne bacteria causing ground gold disease to many dicotyledonous plants. While agrobacterium mediated zinc transfer is very effective in transforming dicot plant cells, it is not applicable to monocots as the bacteria cannot naturally produce any infection to the monocot plants. Direct zinc transfer methods are mainly used for transformation of monocot plants. However, direct zinc transfer and agrobacterium mediated methods are employed for effective delivery of foreign zinc to many important dicotyledonous plants. Agrobacterium mediated zinc transfer. The agrobacterium bacteria are called natural genetic engineers as they can transfer part of their plasmid called ddna into infected plant cells causing crown gall disease this ability of bacteria is exploited for the delivery of transgene to plants the bacteria used for agrobacterium mediated zinc transfer can be either a co-integrate or binary bacter. The gene of interest is inserted into the tDNA region of the bacter and recombinant bacter is placed in the agrobacterium. The transgene construct usually consists of a selectable reporter gene like neogen which is under the control of suitable regulatory sequences functional only in plant cells. The bacterium containing the recombinant bacter is then co-cultured with the plant cells or tissues which are going to be transformed. The lip explants are first surface sterilized properly and lip discs of few mm diameter are excised. The lip discs are used to co-cultivate with the agrobacterium containing the recombinant bacter having the gene of interest. Co-culturing of lip discs with the agrobacterium is performed for about two days during which the acetosirenzone released by the plant cells induces the beer gene to effect the transfer of recombinant tDNA into plant cells. The tDNA integrates into the plant genome and the transformed plant cells become resistant to canamycin due to the expression of selectable marker gene. The lip discs of the two days of co-cultivation with the agrobacterium are transferred onto regeneration medium containing appropriate concentration of canamycin and carvinicillin. The presence of canamycin in the medium will kill the non-transformed cells, allowing only the transformed cells to grow. The carvinicillin will eliminate the agrobacterium cells, leaving only the transformed cells to survive onto the medium. The transformed cells will generate shoots in about three to four weeks, after which they are rooted by transferring to rooting medium containing root-inducing plant growth hormones. The complete transgenic plants with healthy leaves and roots are finally transferred to fill condition after subjecting to proper hardening procedures.
we will go to direct zinc transfer methods. The direct zinc transfer methods involve the transfer of zinc to plant cells without the involvement of any biological agent. The direct delivery of desired zinc into the plant cell was considered important as monocot plants could not be transformed by indirect method using agrobacterium timefusions. Several direct methods are developed which are now employed for the successful transformation of plant cells are electrophoration, chemical method, microinjection method, silicone carbide fiber whisker method, laser induced DNA delivery, macroinjection method, and particle bombardment method. Now we'll go to electrophoration. This method of using electric pulse for delivery of foreign DNA to cells was first introduced by Form and his co-workers in 1986. The transient pores are created in the plasma membrane due to electric pulse. These pores are called electropores, which allow the entry of DNA molecules, ions, and water from one side of the membrane to another. The pores can be resealed spontaneously, and the cells can recover from electric pulse treatment. Electroporation is used effectively for transformation of protoplasts, but due to difficulty of plant generation from protoplasts, plant tissues are often used as explant for electrophoretic transformation. When intact plant cells are used as explant, the rigid cell wall which acts as barrier to DNA transfer is first weakened by mild enzymatic treatment. This allows the successful entry of DNA into the cell cytoplasm. The electric pulse applied for creating transient pores can be of either high voltage of 1000 to 1500 volt per centimeter of short duration of 10 microseconds or a low voltage of 300 to 400 volt per centimeter pulse of long duration of 10 to 15 microseconds. Generally, low voltage and long duration method produce high rate of transient transformation while high voltage and short duration give high frequency stable transformation. Protoplasts of tobacco, petunia, maize, rice, wheat, and sorghum have been successfully transformed using electroporation. Now we'll have chemical method. This method involves the use of chemicals for transfer of foreign DNA into plant cells. The direct uptake of DNA by plant protoplasts can be stimulated by chemicals like polyethylene glycol, we call it in short PEG, polyvinyl alcohol, and calcium phosphate. The chemicals help the DNA to precipitate onto the outer surface of plasma membrane and the DNA is taken inside the protoplast through the process of endocytosis. The transformation medium rich in magnesium ions is prepared 
and the protoplasts are suspended onto this medium. The plasmid vector containing the gene of interest is added into the protoplast suspension followed by incorporation of 20 fraction PEG and adjustment of PIs at 8. The PEG in presence of divalent cations destabilizes the plasma membrane of plant protoplast and renders it permeable to naked DNA. Once inside the protoplast, the DNA enters the nucleus and integrates into the genome. The transformation efficiency increases significantly when the protoplasts are given heat shock before addition of DNA. The use of chemical methods was previously restricted to Petunia and Nicosiana, but this was successfully extended to other plants like rice, maize, and wheat. Next, we'll have microinjection method. In this method, DNA solution is injected directly inside the cell using a capillary glass micropipette. The method was first introduced by two groups of scientists led by Gross and Rich in 1986. The glass micropipettes have 0.5 to 10 micrometer diameter tip which will be used for transfer of DNA into the cytoplasm or nucleus of a recipient cell. The protoplasts or the cells are first immobilized either in agarose or on glass slides coated with polylysine or by holding them under the suction of micropipette before injecting the DNA solution. Specially designed micromanipulator is usually employed for micro-injecting the protoplasts. The protoplasts are held by holding pipette and DNA solution is injected into nucleus by using injection pipette. The micro-injected protoplasts are then cultured using hanging droplet culture method. The transformation is always successful when the recipient cells are densely cytoplasmic, non-baculated or embryogenic cells. When large baculated cells are used, the DNA is often delivered into the vacuum and degraded leading to unsuccessful transformation of the cell. We will have silicone carbide fiber whisker method. The method is very simple with no specialized equipment required to perform the transformation experiment. The plant materials such as cells in suspension culture, embryos and embryo derived calluses are incubated into a buffer containing DNA and silicon carbide fibers and the mixture solution is vortex rapidly. The fiber are about 0.3 to 0.6 micrometer in diameter and 10 to 100 micrometer long and will penetrate the cell wall and plasma membrane when they are vortex allowing DNA to enter into the cell. The fiber mediated the delivery of DNA into the cytoplasm and nucleus through the pores created in the membrane. The method is found 
to be widely applicable in transformation of mesh and tobacco suspension culture cells. We will have laser induced DNA delivery. DNA can be effectively transferred into cells using laser. The application of laser produces transient holes in cell membrane. The DNA enters into the cytoplasm through the transient pores created in the plasma membrane. Studies have indicated high frequency transformation of animal cells using laser. Laser mediated gene transfer is also employed in plants successfully, but there is no information on transient expression or stable integration of gene into plant genome. We will now have macro injection method. This method involves the use of hypodermic syringe to inject the plasmid DNA into the lumen of developing inflorescence. The needles used for injecting DNA have diameter greater than the cell diameter. About 0.3 ml of DNA solution is injected at point above the tiller knot until several drops of solution come out from the top of young inflorescence. The timing of injection is also important for successful transformation and it should be 14 days before meiosis. Now we have particle bombardment method. This method involves the bombardment of microscopic tungsten or gold particles of 1 to 3 micrometer in size coated with DNA to such velocity which enables their entry into plant cells or nucleus. The individual cells or explants are transformed after high velocity particles gain entry into cells by penetrating the cell wall. This is the most important and effective direct gene transfer method which is in regular use. The method is quite useful as it can overcome many biological barriers associated with other methods like host range specificity of agrobacterium and problem of plant regeneration from protoplasts. The introduction of DNA into organized morphogenic tissues such as sheets, embryos, and meristems by biolistic method has made successful the transformation of several useful crops like soybean, wheat, rice, and maize. This method is also called biolistic or ballistic method of DNA transfer and was first used by Sanford and his co workers in 1987. The only biolistic device commercially available is PDS 1000 ICE from BioRed and driven by helium gas. The main components of helium pressure device are gas acceleration tube, ruptured disc, stopping screen, macro carrier, micro carriers, and target cells. The micro carrier, micro particles or micro projectiles 
a gold or tungsten particles of 1 to 3 micrometer size onto which DNA materials are coated. The microcarriers are plastic membrane of 2.5 centimeter in diameter and thickness of 0.6 millimeter which are used only once. The components of helium pressure particles in device are enclosed in a chamber in order to create enough partial vacuums facilitating the particle acceleration. When the partial pressure is created inside the enclosed chamber, pressurized helium gas is released into the acceleration tube and breaks the rupture disk. Helium shock waves generated will accelerate the microcarrier which has DNA coated microcarriers attached onto it. The larger microcarrier is stopped by the stopping screen, but the microcarriers pass through the screen and finally embedded into plant tissues with a calf. 10 mm below the stopping screen. Finally, we will come to the conclusion part. Transnic plants of economic importance have been produced by transferring useful genes using different gene transfer methods. The two groups of gene transfer methods, that is, agrobacterium mediated and direct methods, are applied for transformation of different varieties of plants, though the techniques are fundamentally different. Agrobacterium mediated transfer method is the most appropriate for transformation of dicot plants, while Different direct methods are used for transformation of monocot plants. These techniques, in spite of several advantages, have many drawbacks, such as low frequency transformation, introduction of high copy number, gene silencing, and random integration. There has been tremendous progress in plant transnic technologies despite various problems associated with the plant transformation and many agronomically important crops that were once considered impossible to transform are now successfully transformed on regular basis. Further refinement of existing plant transformation techniques will enhance generation of more transcendent crops of economic importance. Thank you. <music>